VGK explodes for seven goals, including a Jack Eichel hat trick and a win over the tanking Blue Jackets. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi again, everyone. I'm Tony Cordasco along with Chris Golick. We come to you from Las Vegas Monday through Friday. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. You can find us on Twitter at Tony Dasco, at TD Chris G, at Lockdown VGK, the YouTube channel, Lockdown Golden Knights. Please subscribe there. So, Chris, so VGK beat a must lose Columbus team <laughs> seven to two. You love that term on Sunday in a game that, was, you know, VGK was supposed to win. Let's face it. Uh, but the Golden Knights, they got off to a pretty slow start. They scored the first goal. They allowed Columbus to tie it up. But then they got a very strong offensive game. Um, and the other guy, Yuri Patera, did a pretty good job in the crease. Jack Eichel scoring the hat trick. Alex Petrangelo also had four assists. And Patera, again, coming up with some big saves in a 35-save uh, game for the VGK. This game felt just like the Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl Sunday game against the Anaheim Ducks, right? The Ducks were just kind of hanging out for a little bit. BGK was doing okay. And you kind of thought at some point it was going to turn. But then Columbus all of a sudden scores early in the second period. We're like, um, okay, let's see how this is going to go. And, you know, you credit Patera, right? Patera did really well in the final, uh, I don't know, five, six minutes. Uh, CBJ had a real nice push. And then... You know, they got the goal real fast and we're like, okay, how's this going to play out? And then all of a sudden the floodgates open. And I actually uh, sent a, a response to one of your tu- one of your tweets, Tony. I said, listen, if VGK can just get in the right mindset and Cassidy can spin the right dials, they're going to be up four to one at the end of the second. I was wrong. It was five to one at the end of the second. So, you know, and oddly enough, me and Chris took a little walk. We love walking around the stadium during the game. And, you know, we took a little walk and I think we missed three of the goals on our walk. So that was kind of funny, but uh, <laughs> yeah. It's all good. I mean, it's listen, it's a win. It's I'm not excited about it. I don't care if they would have won 10 nothing or, you know, whatever. If they would have lost, we would have had a different mindset, obviously. But it's the Blue Jackets. Like, they beat a team that literally doesn't want to win. So let's uh, let's take our two and let's uh, move forward on a nice, uh, tough roadie coming up. Yeah, they got the twos. There were uh, two points they were supposed to get. And again, they move on. Uh, three games now coming up on the road. And VGK, um, Pavel Dorofeyev, a goal and an assist including uh, both of those uh, scoring points came on power play opportunities. Uh, VGK came into this game just one for its last 27 at home on the power play. Woof. And so they worked on it, they said, over the last two days uh, during the break. But we could see a difference there with the way that they were attacking on the power play. But th- again, you don't know if it's good or bad because – I don't know, Columbus, did they even seem like they wanted to play or at a certain point they just sort of quit? I mean, listen, the players, they've had a tough year. Like, like I'll buy into the tanking theory at the level of the general manager and stuff like that. I don't think there's a – like, I don't think the locker room is saying, okay, guys, let's keep it close for a little bit and then let's just let them have it. Like, I don't think any player in the NHL is ever going to be like that. I don't know if there's any coaches that are even going to necessarily do that as well. So – you know, I mean, they're they're making the best they can what they got. But you mentioned the power play. You mentioned Dorfiev, and uh, Phil Kessel was very noticeable tonight. And uh, Gary Lawless actually had an interesting observation from practice yesterday. Uh, they were working hard on the power play, and Phil Kessel's unit was out there. Whatever happened, I don't know exactly how it went down, but Phil Kessel actually brought his unit together, his power play unit together, and had some words. I don't think he was grilling them or anything like that, just Kessel – the vet took, you know, control of the situation. And uh, obviously they executed, you know, a little better in practice. And of course, uh, Kessel, you could see, especially on the the power play goal that he got very noticeable, very quick rush up the ice. He kind of started things and uh, finished it too. So this is where someone like Kessel is starting to uh, show their stripes a little bit. And we'll see if uh, he can continue down that path, especially watching someone like Pavel Dorofiev, who's, uh, you know, like, I mean, why isn't uh, Phil Kessel up on line two? Pavel Dorofiev, that's your answer. 
Yeah. And uh, it was kind of funny, though, because on TV uh, during, I think it was the second power play, uh, Cassidy was not pleased with the other unit that was out there. And they quickly made that line shift and that change. And they sent in Kessel's unit again. And they just seemed to have more hop, I guess. I don't know quite what it was. Um, a new tradition was born. It was established <laughs> after Eichel's uh, third goal in the hat trick. That's awesome. And at first I thought that Eichel just liked one of the hats and t- was going to keep it for himself yes, as it. a keepsake. I've never seen this before of you. So in any event, they had a bin with all the hats in it as they were picking up the hats off the ice. Um, on a scale of one to 10, by the way, how was the contribution with the hats being tossed in there? Was it good or bad? No idea. But, oh, I think you left early. We were so I mean, I, I literally had already done the recap I forgot, video. Sorry, man. I, I even did the recap video beforehand. And I said my, my quote in the recap video this is pretty good, actually. It's, it's on our Twitter right now. But all right, it's six to one. I've hit all my bets. I have no more interest in this game. We're leaving. <laughs> um, but smart, then, smart. <laughs> we hear the horn go off. We're by the elevator at the Aria parking garage. We hear the horn talking to a couple of people. I'm like, oh, laws is not Eichel. Who cares, right? And the guy looks because his phone looks at me. I'm like, oh, Michael got a hat trick. Okay. <laughs> it was Michael. Uh, so, so he goes in the bin, takes a hat out, gives it to the equipment guy, and you know they saved it. And then afterwards, I was just curious why he took a hat. I've never seen this before. And Cassidy himself wants to establish a new tradition where if you get like a hat trick, you pick out one of the hats, and then they're going to have it in a certain area there, I guess, in the locker room. It was hanging up in Eichel's locker after the game. They're going to start to save these, I guess, as milestones. And when you think about it, though, I was thinking about this after the game. There really is no tradition here. Are they started? Are they still doing that Elvis thing after the games? Or was this like one time where Eichel, you know, was the player of the game and they uh, he was the number one star and they put him in the Elvis getup? I don't he know if the cameras like, catch that a whole lot because that's like right after the game. They don't do uh-huh. a whole lot. I think that was. I wonder uh, if they have any other traditions, though. I, don't know, I mean, the Flamingo goes on the ice sometimes. Alec Martinez or Riley Smith take it to the locker yeah. room and, you know, weird little what things do they like do? that. They, but they don't save that. It's not like something that they would save. I don't, don't may, Maybe there's a Flamingo case, garden somewhere. Tony. They have a case with like pucks in it or something inside there. Who knows? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of things yeah. that we're not privy to that do happen. That would be well, cool okay. stories nice if they memory. came out one day. Yeah, no, I think it was fun i mean we've seen like william carlson like his picture on new year's eve when he was wearing one of the hats when when he hit a hat trick back when he was uh playing like a six million dollar player sorry um you know and you see other kind of goofy things happening but this is the first uh kind and i think it's fun like it's cool and you know bruce cassidy himself even made a comment hey maybe down the road 30 years from now that hat will be hanging somewhere and they'll know like when it was from and you know, it's, it's fun. Like it's, it's cool seeing little things like this happening and you don't see a lot of Cassidy's personal side, you know, so this shows he's got a a little playful side to him, I guess, whatever, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, like the, the look on his face when he walked over to the equipment manager and like Eichel tosses his hat and you see the equipment manager like, okay. You know, he didn't know what was going on. Yeah. He's like, uh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll save this. (laughs) I'll play. It's it's not like a puck or anything. And then, uh, so we saw, uh, Donnell, Tarasov getting pulled from that <laughs> score we was got five the dream to one. matchup we got it <laughs> and we got to see Michael oh, Hutchinson in that I was so awesome <laughs> he still has the Silver Knights uh pads blocker and glove but but he's got a new hat okay uh VGK they should have led more than one to nothing after the first period that was the only I think disappointment so your bets let's talk Tarasov about was bets. great Tarasov had a really good first period so I mean let's not take anything away from his no no first no he period. did he did have a very good first period we swept but... the board we swept the board Tony okay so you had Golden Knights over three and a half goals scored yes that was the first one I felt and that then, I felt good and then about the that. total of the game total you six and a half that was the torpedo bet okay so you hit them both you swept the board I hit three pets I, I hit uh, over six and a half okay I hit three and a half and I took a yes at minus 170 for a goal in the first nine minutes and 30 seconds. Oh, okay. When did that first goal? Uh, pretty fast. About four or five minutes in. Yeah, maybe four even or less. five minutes in. Yeah, that was way too easy. But the golden goal hasn't gone yet for those that have been going to the games. Even if you, if, you know, if you know what this is, Tony, um, uh, Dollar Loan Center is sponsoring the golden goal promotion. If the VGK gets a goal in the first 60 seconds of the third period, they get the jackpot. 
it starts at a thousand dollars and it rolls over. Well, it's about to hit thirty thousand dollars, I think, at the next home game. Yeah, that got your attention, huh? So I was actually having a conversation. How much with, is uh, how much you have to wager on this? zero? Zero. All you do is text. You you you, you send you a text, text message. In. Yep, you send a text, and if you if they hit the goal, they send a text to the winner, and uh, one of the eighteen thousand people in T-Mobile Arena is going to be pretty uh, dang happy. Um, so I actually had an idea here. This is going to be kind of an off the rails podcast as it is anyway. Um, I was talking with Tyler about this. He's uh, like one of the higher ups as far as the production side of the game day you know, production goes. And I said, listen, I got a new promotion for you guys. How about if the away team scores in the first 60 seconds of the third period, someone randomly gets selected in the crowd, they have to pay $1,000. Mm. Okay, that's good. May the odds forever be in your favor, folks. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, so, yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. You swap the board. Yes. And VGK with a big win before they go back onto the road. When we return, we'll talk about, uh, oh, Bruce Cassidy had a lot to say about the goalie situation following yesterday's uh, oh, game, yeah. and we'll be discussing that next. We return right here on Locked On Golden Knights. We started to take athletic greens because we don't have a lot of time. We wanted better gut health and optimized immune system and all of that, and it's been a few months now since I personally have taken it, and it doesn't taste like it's super healthy or chalky. It actually has a taste that I look forward to having each and every day. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you get the day started on the right foot. And there's a lot that we could talk about about Athletic Greens, but you really have to try it for yourself. It's lifestyle friendly, and there's a ton, just a ton of testimonials that you could find everywhere. Just Google Athletic Greens AG1, and we talk about the importance of the multivitamin. Tons of people take some sort of multivitamin each and every day, but it is so important to take one that uh, actually absorbs, and that's what AG1 does. And it's a very strong product that you really do need to try. And for every purchase, they also donate it. Uh, they donate to organizations like No Kid Hungry. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash NHL Network. Take ownership over your health, and you can also pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Welcome back to Lockdown Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. We appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day. And please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Lockdown Golden Knights. So, Chris, so Bruce Cassidy yesterday uh, talked about the team and the fact that they will be taking goalies Logan Thompson and Laurent Brossois, both of those goaltenders on the road for this upcoming three-game road trip. So just curious how things might be shaken out. Uh, Cassidy said perhaps uh, Jonathan Quick will start fewer games down the stretch. Perhaps he won't need as many. He's going to do more research about that. Said maybe LT and LB will see most of the action. He said that he won't be able to get everyone the starts that they want. But the one thing that was missing in that post-game presser was a mention of Aiden Hill. Not one mention. So, okay, who goes out of the goaltenders? Is it only those two goalies that will make the trip up north? I'll bet all four goalies make the trip up north, first of all. Um, you do? Because you oh, think I think well, I, I think they're all four going to go. Just to you don't know what's going to happen right now. I mean, what if uh, Larry and uh, Logan aren't able to? <laughs> something happens, or if they're not ready yet. So I think all four goalies will go, and uh, you'll just uh, you have to check the scratch list and see how it works out. Um, another comment that Cassidy made is the goalies have to be open to you know what they decide basically. Um, and just kind of see which goalies are ready. He did say, well, if Logan is the first one to go, so Logan Thompson is going to be the first one to go. There's no if about that. Logan Thompson is going to be the first one ready between him and Brassois. And um, like you said, there's not enough games left. There's 12 games left to figure this out. And uh, in the words of Cassidy, Logan has to survive his first start. He has to get through the first start. 
Um, the first goal is to survive uninjured. And then we're not going to evaluate the playoff his first game, just going to make sure he can make it a full 60 minutes. Cause um, uh, Lindsay Brown mentioned on the post on the pregame, and she's a fantastic follow and very knowledgeable um, source for a VGK hockey info. Um, but she mentioned, you know, she really believes that this is a hamstring injury for Logan Thompson. Hamstring injuries in any sport are bad and they can flare up and, you know, it doesn't seem like he was gone all that long, especially if it is a hammy, you know, 45 or so days, however long it's been, that's, you know, who knows? I mean, obviously you got to trust the VGK medical medical team. They, they know what they're doing and stuff, but you know, a hamstring is a hamstring and weird things can happen. It doesn't take much to retweak an injury moving past all that. Hopefully LT can get through the first starts and, you know, how do we think they're going to chop up? Like, let's just say there's 12 games. Well, there are 12 games. Let's Aiden Hill, not in the equation at the moment. So let's just wow. assume it's LT, LB, and Jonathan Quick. How do you see this going down? How do you, how many games does each goalie start? You uh, you can go or, or I got my number already if you want me to go. I think you start off 2-2-1, two, two, maybe. Okay. Yeah, that that's and that's the same. What's in my mind of uh, the total number for the 12 games? I'm saying games. quick one. I'm saying quick one. Okay, yeah, no, out exactly. Of 12, yeah. Out of 12, he'll start every third start. So and my starts. math is the same. I'm three starts. I'm I'm five four three. I'm five five for Logan, four for uh, Laurent Brassois, and uh, three for Jonathan Quick. Just keep Jonathan Quick, you know, in the loop and fresh and stuff like that. And there's not going to be a competition. So I mean, listen, if Logan Thompson is healthy, I do think he might get the nod early on as as, as the playoff starter. Reading between the lines of what Cassidy is saying, um, if Brassois and Quick wind up being the better options because Logan isn't ready yet then quick as a starter and Brassois backs him up. That's just kind of how I see this going. But listen, Tony, we still got 12 games left. We could still see, uh, there could still be a path for uh, Yuri Patera to be the playoff starter. And uh, real fast with the goalies here, this is kind of cool. Um, Saturday nights, uh, Dollar Loan Center, Isaiah Seville leads the, leads the Silver Knights past the Bakersfield Comets, backed up by Juran Papirny. Uh, they, I think, had around, I don't know, they, they basically shared the nets down in Savannah with the Ghost Pirates. So kind of cool to see them be on the ice together to celebrate a victory in front of a, a fun game at Dollar Loan Center on Saturday. Real fun game. Yeah. Are they still on the playoff hunt? No. They're, really. they're, the, they're on a scavenger hunt with <laughs> one of those, like, really <laughs> old um, metal detectors. The problem is the metal detector has, like, a couple of real bad batteries in it, and it makes, like, a weird beep every now oh, and God. then. It doesn't you, – you know what I'm saying. It's not – I got it. If they win out, they might have a, a 50-50 shot. They're out of the last like 10 games. So that's if they win seven of the last 10, they could get lucky. If they win nine out of the last 10, they'll probably sneak in. Neither, neither are probably happening. Okay, back to VGK. So the one unknown factor is will Logan Thompson return to form like he was, you know, before the injury. And likewise with Laurent Brossois. That's the unknown as to what they come back and what they come back like, how they're going to perform in the crease. I think that's a major concern. So one thing that I would be concerned about, because who knows? Who knows if they're still going to be hampered by the injury? Who knows if they're not going to be as sharp as they were? Uh, so many things I think could factor in. In 12 games, you're not going to get a good answer either. That, that That's the scariest part of that. Um, starting with Brassois, right? So only gets three NHL games and unfortunately hurts something, you know, something lower body. Um, it played a lot of games at, with Henderson at the silver at the AHL level. So, I mean, it's not that he didn't get a lot of games, but only three NHL games and he goes down right after missing the entire summer, all of training camping. What do you really have? I think December or November is when he first started playing. I could be wrong on that. Yeah, so he's late. been going for just four months after sitting mm -hmm. for five or six months. Right. So we'll see what he can return to. Uh, looking at Logan Thompson. So listen, let's credit Logan Thompson. Let's not forget who he is. Logan Thompson has passed every single test put in front of him since he has become a professional hockey player, uh, going back, I believe, with the Wheat Kings, if I'm not mistaken, and then uh, working his way to, I, I got I hope I was right on that, but uh, I was like a grilled again. But um, then obviously with the Silver Knights, he was absolutely phenomenal, did everything asked to him, whether he was a backup, whether he was a starter. And then again, the Golden Knights, he basically kept the Golden Knights in the playoff hunt who were hobbled and every other thing you could think of to describe their injuries last season. He still gave him a chance. 
this year he's the Pacific Division All Star starter. So I mean, he's had a great season. He's survived every test. I don't know if we've had any major injuries since he started his professional career. So we'll see how he bounces back. But you know, I do have faith that Logan can return to form, and hopefully, uh, Cassidy has to make a decision if if it's better to go with the young uh, young rook. Well, not young necessarily, but go with the rookie. Or, uh, you know, give the net to Jonathan Quick with having, uh, you know, Laurent Brassois ready to help wherever needed. Who starts the first road game? Of the road trip? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it Tuesday or Wednesday? When do they start? I think it's Tuesday. Yeah, I think it's Tuesday, Thursday. I think Quick. I think, uh, I mean, so Aiden Hill, when, let's go back for a second here. There was a time where. They they go back to back with Logan when Aiden Hill was coming back from injury or something like that. Whatever it was, I think they're going to ease in. I'm trying to think of what the situation was. Now it's going to bother me for. But a you second. have Calgary on uh, on Thursday. Isn't that the bigger game, or is Vancouver? Does it matter? Get get the two points. Just get the two points right now. And I think um, I think you let Logan, assuming he's the first healthy goalie, you know, first goalie to return. Get him through game day, get him through the morning skates, get him through the pregame skate, get him through just sitting on the bench and watching a game just to ease it. Right. You know, he's he's still a rookie. He's still young. There's still going to be some nerves. So, you know, you got Jonathan Quick, who has been, you know, solid all season, even against the, the, the Flames when, you know, the, he got shelled for six goals. You could really look closer at that game and not put, you know a handful of those goals on him and also some uh, bad ice and bad puck luck. There you go, Tony. There was almost a bad ice goal, by the way, tonight. I don't know if, if you caught this or not. Uh, VGK just simply chipped a puck in from center ice, just like really high into the air. And Tarasov oversold on it. And he left the crease. That puck had some English on it. And it hit a guitar pick that they didn't get off the ice yesterday. It was the weirdest thing. They didn't get one of the guitar picks off the ice <laughs> and it caught it and it just went right towards the goal. And Tarasov wow. had the double back real fast. Wow. Um, okay. Yuri Patera, the other guy. So is the other guy going back to Henderson? Eventually, but not yet. You think that they're going to carry four goalies up there? I think, I think you have to just because, I mean, listen, they know more about what's happening than we do. So let's start there. If we are believing what is being said in the press in the post game press gone, conference, but they've they've gone overboard. It's the second or third time that they said that they would take both goalies to Canada with them. So I would be shocked if they didn't. Take it's them. a heck of a gamble, Tony. If they roll the dice and say, okay, one of these two goalies is going to be good to go, right? And then whatever happens, Jonathan Quick goes out. There. This is nuclear right now. Okay, we leave Patera home. Jonathan Quick is going to start Tuesday against Vancouver. You have Patera or I'm sorry, you have LT or LB backing up quick. They're not completely ready, but hey, it's Vancouver, right? We're gonna be we're cool, right? Jonathan Quick, something weird happens in warm-ups. He gets hurt in warm-ups. All of a sudden now you gotta roll LB or LT out there. And especially if an, an injury gets, you know, re-aggravated that quick, it just looks bad. So I do think as a state, it's a precaution, you take all four goalies. It, the roster space is available. I don't think that's going to hurt at all right now. There's, I mean, everyone's on an emergency loan. We're nuking the credit cards. We're doing all sorts of weird things right now. We're, <laughs> you know, the schedule make whatever. I'll let you go down that path. But, you know, point being is, you know, it, there's no reason not to. I mean, where the Silver Knights ain't playing for nothing right now. So keep a tear up just in case. And if, you know, as long as there's space in the press box in Vancouver. And it's funny when you look up at the at the press box where the players sit, for the Vegas Golden Knights when they're, you know, when they're scratched or, you know, coming back from injury. There is, there's a lot of people up there right now. There's a lot of people up there. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Cassidy said about the other guy, he played well. He's very competitive. Uh, he said good with his rebound control as well. And that he practices very well. And he said he does have a future in Henderson. He just like, he did, punches. he did say that. Maybe he'll be the guy in <laughs> Henderson. That that. But he did say, he did back it up and say, we'll go from there. He did say that. Yeah, too, but... I know. And maybe someday he'll fulfill his dream. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Just, maybe someday, like... maybe someday. Okay. Here's the over under Yuri Patera, the gold, the, the, the a one starter for the golden Knights. Right. Bruce Cassidy, still the Vegas golden Knights coach. Right. That's a good line. That's even money. I'll give minus 105 on both sides on that one. I won't even take the dime. I'll take a nickel. <laughs> yeah. The last coaches that tried to start a tradition, where are they now? Where are they now? I think he's the first one to try to start a tradition. <laughs> That's right. He is the first one that we there know. There you go. Of, right? This might backfire too. 
<laughs> Coming up next, uh, Bruce Cassidy said that he has his sights set on winning out. And he said they're on winning every game down the stretch. So that's you the third segment. It. Okay, that's the third segment. Got it. <laughs> I'm making stuff <laughs> up here, but we're good. Just roll with it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll return with more right after this. I'm locked on Golden Knights. If you're looking for something really healthy, you have to try a Built Bar. With Built, healthy is actually tasty. Seriously, they're so delicious, you won't even think that they are good for you. What makes Built Bar so good for real is that they are covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. You got to try them. Unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. And we are sure that Built Bar puts so much into this but we don't know why they taste like a candy bar. We can't figure that out just yet, but they're so healthy. When you consider all the macros, right, Chris? Like Absolutely. Calories, four grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. And uh, we're looking for our care packages too. I was gonna I was gonna interrupt you and say that, so thank you. Okay, and now you don't have to wait around to get a box. For years, we've been talking about sending you to built.com, and now you could go to your local Walmart, to your local Sam's Club, that's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today. Walk to the pharmacy section. Grab a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, and coconut puffs. You can try them there. And if you are close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with some of the hit flavors, brownie batter, and churro. Again, if you can't find them there in your local market, go to Built.com. Welcome back to Locked On Golden Knights. Tony Cardasco and Chris Golick from Las Vegas. We appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day, Monday through Friday. Find us on the YouTube channel, Locked On Golden Knights. And, of course, our podcast available wherever you get your podcast. And thanks so much for all those terrific comments. We really do enjoy them. It's so much fun, right, engaging uh, with uh, VGK fans. It's uh, just a blast. Um, so Bruce Cassidy, post-game presser said he doesn't want his team to take their foot off the gas. And he said that they're going to play every game to win. So did you get the champagne dreams comments? Did you see that part? I did hear that. He slid God. that in there. God, that was what so was the, what was that about? It's like so Steve, your 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 buddy Carp, I believe, Carpy <laughs> jumps in there. And he drops Boston's name first of all. I don't know if that was the best idea, Carpy, but we I thought it was hilarious. It. It was, it was he, he said the his comment, question. It was the longest question, right? Well, he season. always does that too. He always does that. But we okay, love. Carpy. At least his phone. At least Carpy's phone didn't go off on the yeah, right. There That's you go. Happened before. Yeah. So Carpy asked them about basically. <laughs> you know, is it better? I don't. I can't remember the exact wording, but he said, "Is it better to be in a spot where all the games are much more meaningful?" Versus like a Boston who's plus 20 <laughs> points or something like that. And then Cassidy you know, smiles that was right awesome. back. Well, it would be nice to have those champagne dreams. I'd actually much rather be in that spot right That's now. So said. it was it, it was playful. And Carp, you know, Carp, listen, I love him. He's so fun to talk to. But you want to talk about someone who has less of a filter than you, Tony? It is Carby. And it, and, it, and I, that's a compliment when I say that. That's a compliment when oh, I say no, that. We know that. We know this. He was up at the San Jose Sharks game on Saturday night. I'm just random. Ugh, so when, that was a, uh, yeah. That's, in yeah, any that's, event, yeah, uh, okay. I wanted to ask you, uh, we spoke about Dorofeyev earlier. Uh, he's more or less proven that he could fit in small sample size. I hate saying that. Uh, but three goals in three games. Just an unbelievable assist in the game on Sunday on the power play unit. Uh, does he stay up with this team? Where will he fit in? No. No, you think he's headed back to when uh, when Waz back? So I, I guess the first question that I have is when did we call Dorofiev up? Because I know there is caveats in there where if someone is not on the roster at a certain point, they're not playoff eligible. But moving past that, my comment is simply based on once, especially once the playoffs come, guys, there are better options, assuming a Nick Wah or Keegan Colasar, you know, obviously Mark Stone too, of course, but assuming the earlier ones who should be coming back, Nick Wah or Colasar, even Carrier, he uh, is telling people at the car dealership that he's hoping to come back in the playoffs at some point, whether that's lip service or not, who knows? So, you know, listen, Dorothy ever will carry it. Will carry it. 
Dorofiev or Kolasar. It's a little closer, but Kolasar. Dorofiev or Nikwa, it's Nikwa all day long. Now, if VGK gets in a spot where scoring is hurting in the playoffs, if we can't get the power play going, you bet your butt that Dorofiev is the first one who gets the pat on the back to get in there and jumps somewhere in that top six and helps out. But, you know, Dorofiev, I think he is close to being an everyday NHLer, but he's not just there yet. You see some kinks in his game. Not tonight. Everyone looked great against Columbus, which is why I made the comment. It's almost as meaningless as the two points as there can be, and people are grilling me for that comment. Well, I'll jump on that in a second. But, you know, Dorofiev, he still has You're some issues. But... You're on the money with that one, so you won four four bets. There you go. Exactly. Dorofiev needs to improve his game between the blue lines, I think. Giveaways, uh, making better decisions with the puck. That's where, honestly, the money is made in the long run between the blue lines because that's when you're, A, you're not turning the puck over, and B, you're creating scoring scoring chances. He's close, but in the playoffs, when every single second of every single shift matters more than it does right now, I don't think he's ready yet. He's close, but not ready yet. Okay. Um, there was also, I guess, a line change, a shift change, uh, not uh, just a personnel change. Uh, Bluger was back with Amadio and Howden. Uh, wasn't Stevenson taking the Booger's place last week in the last <sighs> game? You know, I, I saw think that they switched them. I think they something switched them. about that. They're I saw moving that, them around. Well, I heard it. Yeah, I heard it on the TV broadcast. And I wasn't quite sure, but it's a subtle change, right? It's not Stevenson has been unnoticeable lately, honestly, since he's well, been. If he's playing the third or fourth line. I mean, I don't know. I, no, and, I, and, I and that's fair, Tony. That's you're, you're fair. very you're very right on, though. I haven't noticed him lately. Myself. Why, but why is he on the third and fourth line? It's not because they're trying to balance the lines out. I'll say that's interesting. Yeah, it's not. It wasn't working on line one. It, you know, Chandler Stevenson is Mark Stone center. All right. Or the lineup of Stone, Eichel, and Stevenson also works together. Right. You you take uh, you take Stony away from Stevenson, and that's you know it's been it's been tough. It's been a tough uh, tough go for him, and such a good start to the season, such a good season last year. Largely a lot of games with Mark Stone, go figure. You know, and then now all of a sudden there's a struggle. So we'll see. Um, you know, he's one that we're gonna need. We're gonna need everybody in the playoffs, but you know, Stevenson is relied upon to you know bring that spark and bring that speed. Okay. Uh, they talked a lot about your guy, Vegas Bjorn, the last game. He's my guy. Well, they said he played a terrific game and absolutely wonderful. Okay, just wonderful game. And then, Great game. and the game on Sunday, they scored seven goals. How could you be a minus one? <laughs> and if he was a minus one, they scored seven goals. Okay. Oh my God! You always find a way. There, Listen, there back to the Thursday game. <laughs> I'll say this again: he was okay. probably one of the best Golden Knights that night. Okay, fine. The best of the worst. Is that what you were saying? And that's also fair too. But like he had a goal. <laughs> he got a he or he had two great two assists, right? Two assists. Or no, yeah. He got a goal too, right? In that game the other night. I think he attempted yes. to score a no, goal. No, no, no. Yeah. It was uh the, the shot pass that uh that actually was a pass. No, he didn't score a goal. Okay, fine, but he was very noticeable. He had two assists, I believe. And but he should have had how many goals that game? Three. He got one, and he got one goal that game, Tony. I feel like he got one goal that game because I made the comments that he got one goal, but he should have got a lot more. So we're okay. gonna go back and check. This will take. Me. I can't remember, but I also wanted to talk about while you're looking that up, Jack Eichel. Okay, Jack Eichel, like he just oh, nonchalantly. No goals. no goals. Yeah, he didn't score. Okay, um, should have had four. Jack Eichel nonchalantly like scores those goals. It was just kind of funny because there weren't any sellies, right? So he's just like, okay, goal number one, goal. He just like it was too easy, I think, for him even. But the thing that we saw again, the personality of Eichel when he was there, um, wiping off Jonathan Marchessault's visor. I don't I'll know if you can see that. It was no. on TV. It's pretty awesome. So, so he was just there, like cleaning off his visor with like a towel, just. So we're starting to see some of the personality. That's what I was getting at of Jack Eichel, who sometimes I think appears to be too stoic on the ice. No, and you've said that since day one about him at times. You've noticed some some things like that. And listen, that's part of what got him absolutely grilled in Buffalo, right? You know, but he's the same person. Like he's not too high when things are going really well. Dude got a hat trick. He don't care. And he's not too low when things aren't going well. And Buffalo... I'll say this as politely as I can. Things have not gone well since 2011 when the last time they made the playoffs. 
So Jack Eichel, he's doing the best he can. And, you know, his emotion, maybe he saves it for a locker room when the doors are closed. Maybe he saves it, you know, in those private moments with his teammates and on the bench, there's a level of focus and whatever that may be. Like, I don't care. I honestly don't care. He's producing on the ice. Um, his teammates rave about him. You saw a different side of him at the softball game when dude did a friggin' cartwheel after a home run. Yeah, um, now he's messing around with March on the yeah, bench. Yeah, so, you know, he's – Michael's a better dude than he gets credit for, and in Vegas we see that, and Buffalo and the rest of the country, they don't. So what? I don't care. Uh, one other note here on the way out. Uh, defenseman in the game on Sunday played very well. Uh, Petrangelo with those four assists. They've been great. They even the, even great the flame thing, they were good. Yeah, and then uh, you had Zach Whitecloud, uh, who scored his uh, second goal in two games, right? He, he was on the poster. He was on the poster today. That's why he scored. It was. Uh, you don't got to take photos of that and post them. But, yeah, so some good things do come out of garbage games is what I was trying to get at. Again, oh, sure. Always. Um, you know, in the scrimmage, I should say. It wasn't a game. It was a scrimmage. Scrimmage. I like it. So uh, tomorrow we'll be back again, and uh, we'll have a preview coming up of the Vancouver game and much, much more. We'll try to see how things shake out with the goalie carousel, and we'll have more answers for you, hopefully, there as well. And uh, we thank, for, thank you for making us your first listen every day. We appreciate you tuning in. Go to our YouTube page. Please subscribe. Locked on Golden Knights from my man, Chris Golick. I'm Tony Cardasco from Las Vegas. Good night, and we'll see you again tomorrow right here on Locked on Golden Knights. Tony, it's, it's daytime. We're not recording at night. It's daytime. It's Monday. It's not Sunday. Golden Shh. Knights at night. I oh, Golden Knights. Okay. Yeah. Goodbye.